Anna, then Ant Meshiaka, Bar, Elachachai. Echo Anna. Taxon Bar Nashi Theu Bahimin Chayil. Theu Bahana Nishim. Two, one. Welcome back, everybody, to the Olive Press channel. I am your host, Uza Alfaro, and we are back with another episode of our series called The Badanasha. This is officially episode five in the series, and uh, we've been talking about this Aramaic term, Bad and Nasha. And why it was Jesus' favorite way to refer himself. Um, he called himself the Baranasha over 75 times in, in the New Testament. And um, implied to be the Messiah around 23 times. And so why was this his favorite title? Who did he believe the Baranasha was? And that's what this series is, has been about. And um, if you've been tracking with the episodes, we're, we're trying to create a body of work through video to help us understand as Christian believers, who is, who is the son of man? Who is it that is coming in the clouds of heaven? And what is he going to do whenever he does arrive? And I feel like this series is such, a, such an important series and it's such a crucial time uh, for us to have a series like this where we can have an open discussion of Mashiach and what is he going to do when he arrives. And um, primarily because I feel like the Ecclesia has been on earth for two millennia and there's been some things along the way that have been developed, some some doctrines, some beliefs, some ideolo ideologies that simply do not align with uh, Yeshua's um, views of his return. He said, uh, he said we would see the Baranasha coming in the, in the heavens, in the clouds of in the clouds, sitting at the right hand of power. And we need to align ourselves with Yeshua's view of his return. And right here, I'm not sure still how long this series would go. But I really have a feeling that we're somewhere around the midpoint of the series. And we, if we've, if you've been tracking with the series, we've basically been following two threads of thought. The first thread of thought is the truth and the reality and the weight, the gravity that the Lord is sending a representative, that the Lord is sending us his very son, as the New Testament says, his begotten son, Yahweh, God Almighty in the heavens, is sending his representative, his Mashiach, whom he has anointed to lead, to establish his godly kingdom, theocratic kingdom here on earth, and rule and reign from Jerusalem. That's who Jesus is. That's who the Messiah is. And God is sending his champion. God is sending his Mashiach, his Mashiach. Um, we've started off, we've seen it already in Genesis chapter 3, 15, right? Chapter 3, verse 15. This is what is called the Proto Evangelion, right? Proto Evangelion, basically meaning the first gospel. This is the very first time that it is implied, that it is mentioned through Yahweh himself, that there is a seed that is coming. It would be the seed line of the woman and the seed line of Satan that will climactically come to a conclusion in the end. That that is God's eschaton. That is God's plan. That is God's apocalypse. That it would be good, the good seed from the woman. And it would be the evil seed of Satan that would come to a climactic conclusion in the end. And that is the very first time that we hear the gospel. And it is from God himself. It is from God himself. Now, it is implied 
that this seed will come through a woman, that it would be that he would be born of a woman, and that it would be this this very seed that would be the hope of humanity. We later on in the in the same book of Genesis, we learn that it would be through Abraham's seed as well. So this seed line that we're following, the first thread we're following is, is the seed of God that is coming and that it would be born through Abraham's seed. It would be born through Abraham's descendants. And in the same book, we haven't even left Torah yet. We haven't left Torah, but in this, in this, this thread that we're following in the book of Genesis, it says that not only would it be through Abraham, but now it will be specifically through a specific tribe, a son of Abraham, Judah, right? Abraham, the father of Isaac, Isaac, the father of Jacob, Jacob's name later changed by God himself to Israel, Israel meaning he who wrestles with God. And Jacob had 12 sons and one of his sons was Judah. And we learn through the scriptures that it would be through the tribe of Judah that a king would reign, that a scepter will be given to. And who rules with scepter, guys? A king. A king rules with a scepter in his hand. And following this thread, following this line, we've already seen uh, a few of these portions that I'm mentioning. And uh, we learned later on as well that it would be a son of David. We've talked about it in, in the video called David's Awaited Messiah. That's true. David had a Messiah he was waiting for. David had a Messiah that he was putting his hope in. Um, the second, so, so there is a king that is coming. It would be a son of David. He would establish an eternal peace in the land of Jerusalem that would trickle to the rest of the planet. And he will establish a a godly kingdom on earth, God's kingdom on earth. And that's what Mashiach is going to be. That's what Mashiach is going to do. He's going to bring a knowledge of God to the world. And he will establish that eternal peace that we've all been wanting. We've all been desiring a millennial kingdom that will never pass away. Yeah. Yeah. We need Messiah. We need Mashiach. We need him. The second line, the second thread that we've been following through this series, and we touched base a little bit on episode two, is the promise that not only is a branch coming, not only is a seed coming, not only is Messiah coming, but that God himself is coming in the clouds as well. And we understand in our in previous episodes that for the very first time, Yahweh, God Almighty, unites these two threads in the book of Daniel, um, chapter 7, uh, verses 13 and 14. Um, yeah, the pinnacle, the capstone of all messianic prophecies. And that's what we're studying. We're studying the Badanasha. We're studying the God who is coming in the clouds at the right hand of power. And with the second thread that God himself has promised that he'll come. I don't want to take too much time. But in Deuteronomy 33, we get a prophecy of Yahweh God himself. Deuteronomy 33 verse 1. This is the blessing which Moses, the man of God, blessed the people of Israel before his death. He said, the Lord Yahweh came from Sinai and dawned. From Sierra upon us. He shone forth from Mount Paran. Mount Paran is going to be very, very interesting in this episode today. It's going to be very important. He came from the ten thousands of holy ones with flaming fire at his right hand. So God is coming with myriads of his holy ones and with fire at his right hand. Interesting. Interesting. God is marching from Mount Paran. Interesting that God has fire in his right hand. Yeah, that didn't happen. That hasn't happened yet. 
It hasn't happened yet. In Exodus, Numbers, we get Yahweh manifesting himself, coming down on Mount Sinai in blazing fire and in thunder, roaring thunders. But we didn't see his right hand with fire. And we didn't, we didn't see 10,000 of his holy ones. There was an account where Mo- Moshe, where Moses and, and some of the elders saw the feet of God. Moses went as far as seeing God's back, but he didn't see God in his myriads of his holy ones. Um, so there's a prophecy from the book of Moses in Deuteronomy. That God is coming in the clouds. That God is coming with myriads of his holy ones. With fire in his right hand. Perhaps I closed the book a little bit too soon. But in um, Deuteronomy 20, 26. 33 verse 26. It says there is none like the God of Jeshron. There is none like the God of Israel. Who rides through the heavens to your help. Who rides through the clouds in his majesty. Yeah, God is coming in the clouds. Only Yahweh can ride through the clouds. So there is this thread. There is this line that only God can ride through the clouds. That God is coming in the clouds of heaven. For the for the salvation of humanity. For the salvation of his people. Um, and as we've been following this, this these threads... I'm put an image here that I put in the past that Yahweh is coming in the clouds. And in the bottom, there is the, the fact that the seed is coming. This is the Maranatha message. And I feel like this, this taking a pause here, taking a moment to remember that we must, guys, we must see the return of the Lord in a mature heart and in a sober mind, as the scripture says. In this halfway point, let, let's take a moment to really consider the Lord's return and consider the need for Yahweh to return. Consider the desire, the yearning, the birth pains of Yeshua's return. Now, I'm one of those people that believe that Messiah has come. I'm one of those believers, those followers of Yeshua, followers of the way. I am a part of the Ecclesia, as I am not a, ch- a, a direct descendant of Israel or of the tribes of Judah. I am a Gentile. My blood comes from Salvador, perhaps from the old mix. <laughs> um, but as a Gentile believer, I'm, I'm one of those that believe that the Lord has come through Yeshua. That he was the manifestation, the, the maximum manifestation of God in the flesh. A chosen champion, a representative, a high priest. That was... That gave his life in the cross for the salvation of humanity. But then not only that he came once, but that he is coming again. Which is what Maranatha means. We've been studying the Baranasha, Aramaic term, son of man. Let me introduce real quick a second Aramaic word, Maranatha. Which means the Lord has come. And the Lord will come again. Mara Natha. Let's ponder the need for that. Right here. Right here in the middle of the series. Where I feel it's definitely going to be necessary to see the, the need of God. To see the need of Messiah more than ever. And in a sober mind. In a sober spirit. A mature spirit. Say we need Messiah. We need God to return in the heavens. We need God's divine intervention. In our world today. In our society today. In our culture today. Some of you guys know. That I've, I've we've announced that me and my wife. We are expecting a baby. 
she is healthy. Thank you, God. She is strong. Her heart is strong. My baby needs God's intervention. My baby needs God's presence in her life. And I am praying for those dates, those days. But in this fallen world, in this unjust society, we need Messiah. We need God. The world that we've desired for our families, the world that we've desired for, for uh, full of justice, full of mercy and full of grace is that kingdom. It is that world. It is that empire. The Bible calls it the kingdom of heaven. It is the kingdom of heaven that must return and be established in this world, fallen and broken world. So that Messiah can undo the curses of the garden. I feel like it's so important that we just talk about that real quick. In the book of Psalms. Uh, chapter 110 it's a psalms written by david um there's a lot of debate scholarly debate about who is psalms 110 about is it about david is it about mashiach is it about jesus um in order for us to know who psalms 110 is about we need to know who is verse 1 speaking of it says, um, a, a Psalm of David, Psalms 110, the Lord Yahweh says to my Lord. Interesting. The Lord Yahweh says to my Lord. Hmm. So the Lord said to the Lord, that's interesting. Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Yeah. Perhaps I don't need to say more there, but. David's Lord, David's master, is speaking to David's master. Yahweh is speaking to Yahweh. Adonai is speaking to Adonai. Hashem is speaking to Hashem. Uh, big controversial chapter, but as Christian believers, as followers of the way, as followers of Yeshua HaMashiach, we believe that Yahweh says to Jesus, Yahweh says to Yeshua, the father says to the son, the, just like Daniel, don't get too confused guys, just like in Daniel chapter 7 in episode 2 we spoke about it, the ancient of days presented, was presented before him, the Badanasha, the son of man, and to him was given the kingdom. It's that same context, guys. The Lord, the ancient of days, has said to who? To the son, to the Lord. Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. In the book of Hebrews, it says that Yeshua is waiting. He is waiting patiently for his return. Yes, he is sitting at the right hand of, of power. And yes, he is praying. He is interceding for the saints. He is interceding for he is interceding for his brothers and his sisters, the Jewish people. Yes, he is doing that. But he is what? He is waiting for what? For the Lord to make his enemies his footstool. Let's read it. The Lord sends forth from Zion your mighty scepter. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people will offer themselves freely on the day of your power in holy garments. So is this about David? Or is this about Mashiach? Your people will offer themselves freely on the day of your power. This is the day of the Lord, guys, in holy garments. From the womb of the morning and the dew of your youth will be yours. From the womb of the morning, the dew of your youth will be yours. Verse 4. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The book of Hebrews calls Yeshua our high priest over 15 times. The book of Hebrews alone. We believe in a Lord. We believe in a Redeemer. We believe in a Mashiach, in a Christ who is both King, that the scepter, 
What what is what does verse two say? The Lord sends forth from Zion your mighty scepter, that the scepter will not depart from Israel, as God promised David. So Jesus not only will be a king of Israel, but he is also going to be a priest by the order of Melchizedek. He is going to bring both offices to fulfillment, the office of the king and the office of the priesthood. This is the day of the Lord, guys, the day of the Lord's return. Our our representative before God, the high priest and our king forever and ever. Verse 5, the Lord is at your right hand. He will shatter kings on the day of his wrath. He will execute judgment among the nations, filling them with corpses. He will shatter chiefs over the wide earth. So right here we have a little bit piggybacking off of episode 4, the divine warrior that is coming. So not only is he king, priest, but he's also a general. He's the lead general of uh, the the armies of heavens of the armies of heaven. He is the lead general. He is leading uh, the myriads, the ten thousands of ten thousands of the holy ones of of the people of Israel and of heaven and of the earth. Um, he's the master. He's the leader. He's he's leading us all, and he is coming to execute heads of state. He is coming for his day of vengeance, for the controversy of Zion and for the controversy of his people, for the children of Israel. And um, we haven't spoken about it yet, but in Revelations, it speaks about all children of Israel, even the seeds, the seeds of Israel. That's us, guys. That's the Christians. That's the, the saints, the believers in the way, the believers in Yeshua, the Gentiles, the ones who have been adopted and draft, grafted in. Grafted into this biblical narrative of God and his people. It says that he would execute heads of state. He would shatter the chiefs over the wide earth. He will shatter the chiefs. What does that mean? That means he's going to execute political leaders, generals, and kings. Because he comes in the wrath of God. He comes to tread the winepress of the wrath of God. There are leaders and there are political leaders in the generation of the Lord's return, in that generation. Whether we are that generation or not, we don't know. But the Lord did tell us to, to read the signs, to, to, to recognize the signs of His return, to recognize the birth pains. But it says that He would execute heads of state for the, for the political leaders that have done injustice in the world. And in the middle of this series where we're talking about Yeshua returning in fire. And we're talking about God himself coming in the clouds and how Daniel merges these these two threads for the very first time. As we're speaking of all this, we're getting so much content and we're getting so much understanding, hopefully, as we're learning together in this series. And I want you to see something real quick, and it is verse 7. This is right after he's executing the unjust political leaders, the unjust kings, and the unjust generals. And he's executing his judgments against them, shattering them and executing them. Verse 7. And he will drink from the brook, by the way. Therefore, he will lift up his head. And he will drink... From the brook. A brook is a, sm- a small stream of water. And I feel like in this halfway point point here, we need to drink from the brook. We need to take a pause. And I think it's so wild. A lot of us Christians, a lot of us believers here in the West, in America, here in Texas... We don't think of Yeshua returning in full glory in the wrath of God to establish his kingdom, to establish his righteous judgments, to execute his righteous judgments, killing heads of state and 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 driving the sword through his enemies. We don't think of him taking a pause and drinking water from the brook. It's kind of one of those moments where it's like I have coffee here this today, but um. 
It's like Yeshua is executing his judgment. He's trotting over his enemies. And then as he's doing that, he just goes. And it says this, therefore, he will lift up his head. And as he's drinking from the brook, drinking water from the brook, he's looking, he's looking at the mountains of the south. He's observing what he's doing. He's observing the world. He's observing us. He's observing his brothers. He's observing his sisters, the Jewish people that he's freeing from captivity. The Bible says that he will free prisoners. He will heal the blind. He will heal the sick. He's going to come back in miracles, guys. A miracle worker. A lot of us read that scripture and just think that it's a spiritual thing. That God is going to spiritually free us from our prisons, our, our anxieties, our, our depressions, our mental illnesses, our, 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 our sin from the inside. We, we, are, we are prisoners to that sin. But now that we believe in Jesus and we over-spiritualize things, we over-spiritualize the prophecies. And absolutely, I can definitely see how God has freed us from our sin, from our prison of sin. And now that we're free, but this is a legitimate and literal prophecy that Yeshua will return and free the captives during the exiles that is coming, during what the Bible calls the Great Tribulation or Jacob's Trouble, the trouble that Jacob, the people of Jacob will go through. And as he's freeing them and as he's healing them, he takes a sip of water. And he observes what he's doing. And I feel like that's what this episode is. Um, we need to recognize the need for Maranatha. Recognize the need for Maranatha. The need of Yeshua's return. In the coming episodes, we are going to be addressing certain topics that I know is brewing within us to cover. I've had many people ask me at church. Yes, I go to church. I haven't mentioned it here, but I go to church. Um, me and my wife, we attend the community here in Fort Worth. And we are part of the Ecclesia. We hang out with our brothers and our sisters. And I've had some people ask me, um, who's the Antichrist? What is the Antichrist going to do? Isn't Yeshua going to interact with the antichrist as we're studying the coming of the baranasha we are stepping into certain topics that are going to get very wild that are going to get very interesting and if we are not careful and we do not cover these topics with a sober mind and a mature spirit we can easily get caught up in kooky land <laughs> um uh, yesterday was april 22nd the first day of Pesach. And Pesach is, is Hebrew for Passover. And the Jewish people are observing Pesach. They're uh, observing the day that the Lord passed over them. All those years ago in the land of Egypt. Of the foreigners, right? A foreign land that is not known to them. And the children of Israel were, were, were exodused from the land of Egypt through the prophet Moshe, the civilizer, the lawgiver, and depending on, on um, how they decide, different groups of Jewish people, some people observe Pesach one day, some people observe it for seven days, some people observe it, it's, it just changes here and there. Um, but very strange things, guys, online, leading up to yesterday's first day of Passover, or the day of Passover. People saying that the red heifers and they were going to get sacrificed and the the war with right now in the middle of a war with Israel and Iran and everybody's observing Israel and and all these things. And I hope that we're praying for the children of Israel and I hope we're that, that we're praying for Palestine as well, that everybody just be safe, guys, and that and that the peace could come. Um, and in the middle of, of all this, this climate, this geopolitical climate, guys. Um, yeah, everybody's 
talking about the red heifers. Everybody's talking about the Antichrist. Everybody's talking about um, Gog of Magog. Everybody's talking about the apocalypse. Everybody's talking. Everybody thought the the eclipse. By the way, that guys that was beautiful, and I hope you guys saw it. Um, but everybody's talking about the eclipse, and is the eclipse related to Revelation chapter five? And and um, now they're talking about the red heifers, and and it's just like everywhere at once. Because like this girl, her name is Sarah Beth. I've completely forgot. Sarah Beth from uh, this church in Dallas called The Upper Room. She said it best. And I quoted her a couple, epi- a couple episodes ago. Because Israel is the clock. Israel is the clock. And we must drink from the brook. And keep our heads up. And in a mature spirit. While we're covering these topics, take the return of the Lord seriously. Take the Maranatha cry seriously. That not only has the Lord come once, but the Lord will come again. And that we need Messiah. We need Messiah to return. We need God's intervention. And if we don't, we don't recognize the need for Messiah's return. If we don't recognize it in a mature spirit, in a, in a mature mind, in these coming topics, like the Antichrist, like the beast, like the dragon, like the image of the beast. Um, and yes, even the rapture. Um, we're, we're, we will easily get lost in all that. And I don't want to talk about the mark of the beast if we don't first recognize It's Jesus that is at the center of all of this. It is Messiah that is in the center of all of this. It is our need for God. It is the need for God in our times that is the center of this message. I said it once and I said it before and I will say it again. That I don't want biblical prophecy if it's not Jesus. I don't want biblical prophecy if it's not the beloved Yeshua. If it's not our beloved if it's not the bridegroom at the center. So, are we going to talk about these topics? Yes. Yes, we are. I know people are excited for that. Uh, guys, ask questions. Please leave the questions below. Um, but we will talk about these topics. Um, but for today, let's leave it there. Remember, guys, Jesus is in the center of of this series and let us remember to have a sober mind and a sober spirit and recognize the need for maranatha for the intervention of god in our times i love you i'm praying for you i hope you enjoyed this short episode and we will see you next time here at the olive press channel like share and subscribe but until then maranatha may the mashiach come soon in our time.